For Richard and Jackie Gagnon, the emergence of Ramcat Alley offered the opportunity to pursue a dream. Thus, Antiques and Company was born. This building was built in the late 20s, early 30s and was uh, originally an appliance furniture general store. Um, at, at one time during its past, it has been a grocery store, a hardware store, an appliance store. Um, when the building went on the market in 2000, we decided that it would be a really neat place for an antique shop, specialty shop. And so um, my husband and I, along with my son and his wife decided to do a joint venture and actually uh, rebirth this building. And we spent many hours uh, renovating the building and we're really fortunate that we had original tin ceilings to work with and just had great wooden floors. Um, it, it took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but it was definitely worth it. We have this, this awesome building that, that we feel like now is a part of us. And on this side, we have a restaurant, circa 1930, appropriately named because that's about the time the building was built. On this side, we have the White Magnolia florist owned by Bonnie Alexander, and we're really happy to have her as one of our tenants here at Tannen Hall. Down these stairs is the lower level of Antiques and Company. And when we first purchased the building in 2000, it was a dark, damp basement. And we later learned that during the construction of the building, um, something happened to halt the construction. We're thinking that possibly the Great Depression was what stopped it. And the basement, since it was poured in concrete, they decided that they would fill it with water and allow the children in the town to come use it for a swimming pool. Within the many shops of Antiques and Company, we find a variety of both historic and novel artifacts. This is a dry sink used in the early 1900s um, before homes had plumbing in them and um, you would use a pitcher to pour water in it and utilize it much like you do your vanities in your bathroom today. This is an oak table and it's circa 1880 and it was made in the Golden Oak area between 1860 and 1920. What's unique about this table is it's tiger oak and it has expands into four more sections and you can see on the floor here we have the sections that go with it. While both Rich and Jackie have their favorite items, for shop manager Evelyn Owen, it's the stories behind the antiques that make the job most interesting. This particular piece is a Chinese wheelbarrow, probably somewhere around World War II era. And there's a funny story that goes with this wheelbarrow. A gentleman came in one day who had been with the Flying Tigers in China previous to World War II. He said every morning that the farmers would take their pigs and their poultry or whatever they were taking to market on these. They would tie them on the flat wheelbarrow and roll them across to market. The thing he made note of was that the axles are wood and they squeak. One of the fellows in his squadron got the bright idea one morning that he would take some grease from the airplane hangar and grease the farmer's axle, which he went out, stopped the farmer, greased his axle to the farmer's just horror. In China, a squeaky axle wards off evil spirits. So the farmer's good juju was gone because his axle no longer squeaked. And he was not very fond of the American pilots after they greased his axle. During past years, sugar was a very expensive commodity, therefore it was kept under lock and key. It was in like blocks. You would take the sugar, put it in the cutter, cut it to the specific size you wanted, and dole it out to whatever part of the household needed sugar, and then lock it up. What I feel the difference from this store to the normal antique stores is that we cater to everyone. We try not to keep it a free market atmosphere. We have something in here for everyone. We try to keep it upscale. We have good furniture and good merchandise. There are useful items, decorative works, transformed pieces, and even mystery objects 
truly something for everyone.